Just like with fractions, with decimals, we can do most of the work for the SAT that we need to do on our calculator. But again, it just comes in handy to know some of the basics about decimals. So remember decimals are you know, basically out of 10. We have a base 10 number system. So decimals just drill down into the smallest parts of that base 10 system. So one thing to know is your digit. So let's say we have the number 234.706. This is the ones or the unit digit. This is the tens, hundreds, we could do thousands, ten thousands, and so on. Then we can go in the other direction. This is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, thousandths, and so on. Ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. You don't really need to know the, the big ones. Basically, just these uh, are your, your major ones for the test. Uh, for rounding, as you probably know, if the number you're rounding is from 0 to 4, it rounds down and 5 to 9 it rounds up. So if we had the number for example 33.962 what if we want to round to the nearest uh, tens place? Well we would look at the tens digit look at the one right next to it, it's a 3 which is in this range so we round down so this would become 30. What if we rounded to the nearest ones? Well again we look at this, we look to the right, it's a 9 so this is going to round up, this becomes 34. And we can keep going. So what if we want to round to the nearest tenths? So we would look here, look to the right, it's 6. So it's going to round this one up, which then it's going to carry over into this. So for this one, we're going to get 34.0. And one more. Again, we'll round this guy. We look to the right, it's a 2. So we round down, and we get 33.96, and so on. Adding and subtracting decimals, obviously you'll do this mostly with uh, your calculators, but the main thing is just to make sure you're lining up your decimal places. So if I have 0.023 plus 0.0032, you got to be careful in terms of, okay, which numbers are actually going to add up. That's why for a case like this, it's usually better to stack them. So I get 0.023, match up the decimal places, 0.0032, throw in a zero there. And now I can just add down. Rather than trying to guess, it just gets confusing. Um, if you're not using your calculator, it's best to do it this way. So we would get uh, 0.0262. And subtracting obviously works the same way. Multiplying and dividing, for this, just use your calculator. I mean, you can do it by hand. It's just a pain. Uh, the one thing to remember is when you multiply two decimals, just like when you multiply two fractions, so if I do um, 0.023 times 0.0032, put that in my calculator, I get 0 0.0000736. So notice this number is smaller than the others. And again, that's what we talked about for multiplying fractions. The number gets smaller. Whereas if you divide decimals, uh, the numbers get bigger, or at least one of them gets bigger, you know, depending on the numbers. But yeah, so if I do 0 0.52 divided by 0 0.25, I'm going to get some answer that's going to be increased. Uh, so this is what, like 2 point something, 2.04, I think. Um, so that's just another thing to remember. When you multiply and divide decimals, it's like when you multiply or divide fractions. For repeating decimals, this just matters for gridding in. Um, let's say you get one third as your answer. I would actually recommend you grid this in in your four spots as 1 over 3, just to avoid any issues. But in theory, you could grid this in as a decimal. Now this, if you look in your calculator, is 0.333 repeating, right? That bar means repeating. So you could grid this in, or you have to grid this in as 0.333. If you just did 0.33, not good enough. If you did 0.3, definitely not good enough, because you have to communicate all the decimal places. That's why it's best just keep it as a fraction. If you had something like 2 thirds, this is where things get even weirder, you can grid it in as 0.667 for the rounding, because this is a 0.666 repeating. Or you could grid it in even as 0.666, which is strange, because we're not rounding, we're truncating instead. That's why just grid in the fractions, it's much easier. One last point, kind of related to decimals, is scientific notation. So this is just an easy way of representing large numbers that have a lot of digits, a lot of decimal places, whatever it might be, and just a co compact way of representing this information. So let's say I had the number uh, 600,000. Not a terrible number, but let's say I wanted to, to write this as a uh, scientific no in scientific notation. So you find the decimal point, you move it over until you're next to your six. So one, two, three, four, five. When you move to the left, you put a positive exponent. So I moved it five to the left, so I do six times 10 to the fifth. So when you move it to the left, this number increases. Because right now you can imagine this is times 10 to the zero, 
which is one, right? And as we move this to the right, this number ticks up. I can also look at this the opposite way. If I have point o o o o o o three, that's a horrible number to write. I can write this in scientific notation. Again, move the decimal until it's right next to your three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put it right there, so that's seven moves. And since I moved it to the right, this number's got to decrease, so I'm going to get three times 10 to the negative seven, right? Because you can imagine this was originally times 10 to the zero, and we just take it down to the minus seven. You can use your calculator for this stuff. It's not a huge deal. You know, this isn't a physics test. It's not a chemistry test. You don't need to know it too well. Just know that occasionally there's questions on it, and be at least comfortable using your calculator at the very least.